Hello, my name is Helen Ting. Today we're going to practice repair of the perineum with suturing equipment and a foam block. Before watching this video, you should have reviewed the anatomy of the female perineum. Let's go over some key points. First, you want to identify the apex of the tear and start your repair past that point, about a centimeter past. Number two, reapproximate the anatomy by using anatomical landmarks, such as the hymenal ring and vermilion border, which is the point of transition between the inside vaginal mucosa and the external keratinized skin. Our repair will be done in three stages, closing the vaginal layer, the deep tissue layer, which includes the bulbal cavernosus muscle and transverse perineal muscles, and finally the skin layer. Fourth, we want to close the dead space with our suturing because this decreases the potential space in which a hematoma could accumulate and increase your risk of infection. And lastly, always consider performing a digital rectal exam before and after the repair. Doing a DRE before your repair will help you distinguish between a second or third degree tear by palpating the integrity of the anal sphincter. Doing one after your repair helps confirm that no sutures have punctured the rectum. This foam block represents the female perineum. The top surface of the block represents the posterior vaginal wall. I've drawn out the edges of the vagina and the hymen, which is represented by the short horizontal black line. The front face of the block represents the female's perineum, which is facing you. The black X is the anus. I've cut a cleft into the block to recreate a second degree tear. The black mark inside represents the torn edges of the bulbal cavernosus muscle. As I demonstrate the repair today, I'll be rotating the block for demonstration purposes. But during your time in the workshop while you're practicing, try to not tilt or move the block, which can make suturing easier for yourself. Instead, you should practice moving your wrist, arm, and body position to get a better suturing angle. Let's load the needle now. I prefer grasping the needle two-thirds to three-quarters of the way down from the tip of the needle. The closer you grasp to the tip, the more control of the needle you'll have, but you'll have less needle space to work with. I also like to angle the needle a bit past perpendicular to the axis of the needle driver. This gives me a more ergonomic position in my wrist and arm. Okay, let's begin. Identify the apex of the laceration. Use your sponge to wipe away blood to clearly see the apex. In deeper second degree tears, the tear often occurs in a V shape and there will be two apices right and left. In these cases, choose to repair one limb of the V first and then restart from the apex of the second limb and continue repair. Place your anchoring suture one centimeter above the apex of the laceration. In this demonstration, I will be using instrument ties, but in real life, you should do one-handed ties. It's a good idea to practice these prior to your surgical rotation. I won't make my knots too tight here because it will tear the foam. However, in real life, your sutures should be secure and square. For braided sutures, three or four square knots are enough. Reapproximate the vaginal mucosa and underlying tissue by running the suture towards the exterior in a continuous fashion to the level of the hymen. I will do my running suture in a locking fashion which helps prevent shortening of the vagina. Suture bites should be placed around one centimeter apart and half to one centimeter away from the edge of the tear. Be mindful to incorporate enough tissue into your suture bites so that you don't tear the tissue, but also remember the rectum lies posteriorly. As I approach the hymen, I take smaller bites because I don't want to narrow the introitus, which is uncomfortable for the woman. I will place one suture on the inside of the hymen and then the next set just outside of the hymen 
so I have perfect reapproximation of the hymen. I will end my vaginal layer about one centimeter past the level of the hymen and tie the suture to itself. When I cut the suture, I'll leave a small tail to come back to later. After completing the vaginal layer, we will close the deep layers using interrupted sutures. First, place the crown stitch. This reapproximates the bulbocavernosus muscle and rebuilds the perineal body. I'm right-handed, so my first bite is on the right side. You'll probably need to reload your needle to do the second side. The placement of your bites on each side should mirror each other and the knot will be towards you. Then, I'll insert my finger into the dead space to get a sense of how deep it is. For the remaining interrupted deep sutures, it's important to remember the proximity of the rectum. To protect it, you should keep the plane of your needle horizontal so that the movement of your needle tip is parallel to the rectum, instead of plunging down into it. You'll want to position the foam block or the patient on the edge of the table so that your wrist doesn't hit the patient's bed. For this demonstration, I'll tilt the block. Place additional interrupted sutures below the crown stitch to reapproximate the transverse perineal muscles and close the dead space. The entire stitch lies under the skin with a knot towards the outside. The last step is closing the skin layer using a running subcuticular stitch. This is more comfortable for the patient than interrupted skin sutures. Sometimes, however, I do use interrupted skin sutures if the skin tear is short or very irregular. Start by anchoring your suture at the end closest to the anus. Then complete the skin closure using a running subcuticular stitch. I usually use the remaining 2-0 vicral repeat, but 3-0 vicral repeat can also be used. Since I'm right-handed, I will need to switch the needle orientation to backhand when I'm suturing on my right side, and then switch the needle back to forehand for my left side. When I reach the top, I can tie my suture to the end I left from the vaginal layer. I cut the suture tail pretty short at about two millimeters. If it's too long, it's uncomfortable for the patient. Before finishing, do another DRE.